All the way? Oh, all the way. Okay, and then I will Pump open. It closed? Up close, yeah. Perfect. That's it. Go and down till you feel the ass end come up. Bump it up one or two. Yeah, there you go. Now just focus on getting in that crossbar. Yeah, that, that black line right into the plate. Keep going, keep going, keep it cut, yep. Till you feel it bump, keep going. Maybe straighten it out a little bit. You know, you want to see that car bump. Goose it. No, yeah. you, you don't want to hit it soft. I want you to hit it. Okay. Not like go forward a little bit. Mm. Okay, now stop. Now go in reverse. I want you to see that car. Go gunk. Not. But now I know the crossbar is touching both tires. Both tires. Otherwise, I don't want it to be touching one because we're on an angle. Oh. You know what I mean? So let's just get out and look and make yeah. sure. Okay, we're good. That's all we want to do. That's why you wanted to see it bump because you don't want it to be far away from the tire. Wrap the jaws around the tires. Close. Yep. Now hit up. Close and that's not up. Yeah. Put the cruiser sleeve over the tire. And again, you want it in the 12 o'clock position. I like to pull it, give it a little bit. And at that point, now when you're tightening it, there's nothing wrong with pulling this down until you see that tire. Because two straps are going to stretch, first of all. And having that type of indentation is okay. And the only reason why I say that because if that strap stretches, it's going to make that bulge go from there to there. You know, it, it is going to keep it tight. So it's always going to be taut. So you can put it underneath the strap if you'd like, just to keep it taut. Mm -hmm. Make sure it's at the 12 o'clock position. And then reef the shit out of it. That way it stayed taut. And that's a sufficient. So now let's just do the other side. Yep. Yep, 12 o'clock. Now, you just want to keep baby that thing. You want to make sure that thing doesn't bind against it because it's very sensitive. Oh, yeah. That thing will get bound up and caught up. So if you don't kind of baby that with your finger, make sure it's not binding against nothing, you'll end up tearing it out. Yep. Give her a Absolutely. Yep. So as long as you got room for the tailgate, then you got room to turn. So that's a good point of reference. So now, truthfully, you should put safety chains on here too. A lot of guys don't do it, but it's wrong. You should do it. Okay, so lift it up all the way. Okay, now let's get some safety chains on. So you're gonna grab your safety chain. Notice that your safety chains are bolted to the box. Look at the bottom of the box. You see that? Big yes. ass nut and bolt. Yep. That's your safety chain. It's bolted to the box. So pull these all the way out. Well, they say you're supposed to throw them in the net. So give me that one. Yep. Well, what you're going to find is something structural on the car, like this control arm. We don't want to wrap it around, you know, the uh, tie rod or shock or anything that is not structural you know anytime you go around the frame but loosen that one or two more you know, up and i just want to be able to touch the ground quick lesson on tomate tow lights one of the great things about tomate is they tell you first of all there's a lifetime warranty on all electronics so if something electronic goes within this light there's a lifetime warranty there's not a lifetime warranty on the battery that's you know i think it has a year or two warranty but people don't know this when you turn the, the unit on it tells you the battery life first it goes left left right right now it's gonna do four blinks for a full battery three blinks would be a three quarters of a battery two blinks would be half a battery one blink would be a quarter of a battery so you got a full battery here second thing I would do is I would throw these out you can keep them they're, 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 they're not to scratch a car, but these are only 95 pound magnets. And what'll happen is you'll hit a bump and you will lose a sucker. 
You know what I mean? So it's better to keep them on there. Another thing that you can't do, it's better to keep them off there. You can't have this on when you plug it into the cigarette lighter because it'll blow the fuse inside the cigarette lighter. It'll the light will still be on the cigarette lighter. You think it's charging and it's not. So never plug this in with it on. Turn it off, plug it into the charger. How do you get the best life out of your battery? Always keep it charged. Never put it on when it's barely enough because then if you keep doing that, you're gonna burn the nickel cadmium battery out. If you keep it fully charged all the time, this thing will last you for five, 10 years, okay? All right, so you got your hazards on. So these hazards should be on. And they're on. So we're good to go. This one is dead sensor from here. So whatever my light is, they blink it. Exactly. This is the sensor for that. You also, I would move it out of here and put it in the truck. Put it in the truck because if you drop it, break it, hit a thing, it's gonna fall on the bed of the truck. It's safer to put it there. Yep, good job. Wiggle that boy in there good. Make sure that door shuts on the other side of that. Yep, you're good. Okay, good man. Let's just check it, make sure the stuff's still working. Yeah, we're good to go. Yeah, turn the hazards off. Okay, and turn this off or no? Yeah, this, this oh one. yeah, yeah, exactly. Turn that off right now, because you don't want to accidentally hit the button. Yeah. That way with it off right there, this is dead. Yeah. So good job. Yeah, you can just drive around the block, go straight. Oh my, this one is my first, huh? <laughs> oh, man. So in this one, we can go for highway? Oh like, yeah. Free. Because the, tr the car is so much smaller than your truck, you know, one, one is really big and one is not so big. So because the, it's a passenger vehicle and you're in a one ton truck, your brakes can sufficiently stop both the load of the truck and the vehicle, mm -hmm. the momentum. Now, if you had another 350 on the back of this, you couldn't do that. The brakes are not strong enough. See, the important thing that you need to notice too is look how we can have a conversation over this bumpy road. If this was a wrecker, you'd sound like this. But this truck rides like a Cadillac with them Fox shocks. There's a load on it. You're a wrecker, and this ride's so beautiful. Yeah. And this is where people are so attracted to this equipment. If I drive fast, no matter how. Dude, it's, it's, dude, you're fine. You, you could do 60, 70 on the freeway. I'd go left here. Do you see how nice it drives hitting those bumps? Yes, yeah, nice little. That's very unique for this condition. You know, for towing a car to have such a soft ride. Now you look good. And I like to take my safety chain and put it like this. So that way I'm not searching for the thing. You know what I mean? I like to hide it just like that. That way I'm not at nighttime digging around in there trying to figure out. Now you can go down with the wheel lift until you feel the ass end of the truck come up. Feel it come up. Now, see, feel that fit. Yep, yep. Now, when it goes, when you feel the ass end come up because you went down so long, it zeroes back out. Yeah. So now you can hit open. Open. Yep. Hold open. I heard both of them close, so I know you're clear. And I know you went down all the way, so you can start pulling out, put it in drive. Hang on, hold on to this, and start bumping it up. As you put it in drive, put it in drive real quick, put the foot on brake. And now as you pull forward, start bumping it up because you're not gonna hit nothing. Start pulling forward. No, up, you're gonna bump it up, not yet. Start pulling forward a little bit. And just bump, bump. And But you gotta be going forward too. Bump, bump. Go forward, 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 don't hit nothing. There you go, perfect. Now hold it up all the way. Up all the way, okay. Yep. Wait for it to bottom out, keep going. Now you heard it bottom out, now go in all the way. 
and you're done. Now you can yeah. drive away and go off to the next tow. You're a tower now, buddy. <laughs> huh? Do you like it? Yes. Is it is easy? It's easy, yeah. You just need to, you know, just more practice. practice. Yeah. Exactly. And then you'll feel more comfortable. Everything, once you get acclimated to how the procedure works and, you know, you feel more comfortable, you won't even look at the camera. So, you know, right now you're looking at the camera like it's, you know, the Bible, but you need to yeah. um, use it to get more comfortable. Once you get do it a dozen times, you won't even, I'm, t I'm telling you, all the nervousness will go away. Yeah. You did yeah, good. Mike, same thing, all together, same thing, you know? Yeah. Uh, so, Mike, what about the oil pan? Most of the cars, we don't hit the oil pan, huh? No, one of the things that I never had a customer hit an oil pan, great question, because the, the pivot head is tilted up and it pushes the oil pan away from the crossbar. So every inch it goes up, it pushes it two inches away from the crossbar because of the angle. So I've never had a customer say, dude, I dented an oil pan. Because of the superior pin system, the angle of the head is all in your favor to not destroy customers' oil pans. Mike, what about the sleeves? What about the sleeves? Why we need the sleeves? You need the sleeve, hit the jaws, hit close all the way in the jaw. Let me show you something. So the reason why people need sleeves is because they have an L-arm that's fixed. It's welded. It, can't, it do doesn't move. So they need something to shorten the distance from here to here. Oh. you got a spring-loaded L-arm. You could push that sucker in right here, strap it, and it can lift. It's structural in this position, this position, this position. It doesn't matter. You have adjustability from here to here for whatever your load dictates for it to grab. You follow me? Yes. And you can strap it in this position over the rotor, over the control arm, over whatever you need to do and lift up. Say they didn't tell you that one of the ball joints busted. This is the, you know, there's no um, accessory that you need. There's no attachment that you need to accommodate it. So it's all incorporated into the lift itself. What about Mike? Uh, once we be, you know, drag, so is when it wears out, that's a great question. When the wear pads wear out here, yeah. see that wear pad? Yes. Don't let it chew up my L arm. Go somewhere and get another piece of steel. Oh. Square good. and welded. Right there too. Don't let it tear up the crossbar. That's yeah. silly. That's nothing, yeah. You know, you, all you gotta do is simply and that's gonna take a long time. That's okay. AR. It's abrasion resistant. But just thinking, you know, which one do you use? Steel? AR? Yeah. Make a bunch of money, a couple years, buy another one. Yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah. Seriously, if I will make some money, I will buy another one. Yeah, because and you will. I used to. This truck is a money maker. Yeah, because I can go with my family. Fifth wheel, gooseneck, family, it doesn't yeah. matter. This is so diverse. No, one insurance payment, one truck payment, it does everything you need it to. Yeah. It's a beautiful truck.